Hi, my name is Crystal Fletcher and welcome to All About Canadian Books. I love to get to know the person behind the book. This is my mission. So to accomplish this, I ask authors a series of 10 quick questions. So let's get to know acclaimed journalist and best-selling author, Mark Bulgach. Welcome to All About Canadian Books, Mark. Thank you, Crystal. It's great to be here. Well, it's great to have you here and let's get to know you. Are you ready? I hope so, yes. <laughs> Interrogation can begin. <laughs> All right, here we go. So, do you go for a walk every morning? I do. Uh, it's a pandemic thing. I used to go to the, the gym, the YMCA, every morning. Uh, but when they closed it down, I thought, well, uh, I've got to be able to do something. And I mean, I have gained weight, I must confess, uh, during the pandemic, because I'm home more. And I, it just gives me opportunities to, you know, snack on a cookie every once in a while. <laughs> and and you know, walking is good, but it's not the same as an intense workout. Um, so yeah, I go walk every morning about, you know, five to six kilometers. And I've learned, I've actually, one of the benefits if there's such a thing uh, during a pandemic i've learned about audiobooks i never mm. listened to audiobooks before uh, but now as i walk i listen to audiobooks or podcasts but almost always it's an audiobook and it's so it's opened me up that way to a, a new way of experiencing books which has been great uh and part of my walk every morning i must say i must confess is also I walk my granddaughter to school every morning, uh, which is, you know, another blessing yeah. <laughs> uh, and it's terrific. So yes, I have become a walker, which I certainly never did before the pandemic. What would you say is your most memorable moment as an umpire? As an umpire, yes. So uh, that was an, a, uh, a thing I picked up after I retired from CBC, I, I could never do that when I was a working journalist at CBC, mostly because I worked at night uh, or I just worked crazy hours. And I never, I was unreliable as a human being. I was very reliable as a journalist, but I could never guarantee I'd be anywhere when I said I'd be somewhere. I mean, you can talk to my wife, but don't about how many times I dropped her. You know, we went, we were going to a play or we were going somewhere and I'd get a call and I just drop her. Or, I, or she'd take over driving and I'd catch a cab and go to the CBC. Um, so umpiring, uh, you know, baseball, I've always loved it. And I have loved working with kids. And again, uh, because I worked at night for so long, uh, I didn't see my children uh, play ball very often. I'd go, I'd see the championship game sometimes because it was on a weekend, but I wouldn't it'd be my wife's job to take them to evening games. Uh, but I've loved baseball all my life. And uh, so umpiring has been great. Uh, I, I really do enjoy being with the kids. And, and, and the good thing I think about the kind of umpiring I do is I, I do it with little kids. Uh, and for them, it's a learning experience. And, and so I don't, like I try to be as generous as I can about stuff and help them. Like when I see a catcher standing on home plate, waiting for the ball to come with a runner coming down at them, what I enjoy doing is teaching, like not letting them stand there to get bowled over, uh, but to tell them where they should be standing and how they catch the ball and then how they, how to apply a tag. So, I mean, the, the joy of it is seeing kids have fun, really. I mean, I don't want to get into arguments with grownups, God knows. Uh, and that's been the best part of umpiring. Yeah. Um, you're also a teacher at Ryerson. Mm -hmm. What has teaching taught you about yourself? Uh, I think what it's taught me is that not everybody is me. Um, <laughs> I mean, I knew I wanted to be a journalist from the time I was in short pants. I mean, I always wanted to be a journalist. Yeah. And even, and I, I kind of went into it thinking, if you're gonna teach at a school of journalism, everybody in there would be fired up to be a journalist, just as I was. It's simply not true. Um, people take a course or take, even enroll in a whole program 
not being sure of what they want to do. I mean, I, I, so I was surprised, <laughs> frankly, that when I, I mean, I, I taught a class where we did a newscast. It was only once a week, uh, but we did a half hour newscast, which dare I say, I'm pretty good at. Uh, so I knew how to do a newscast and I, and I am good at teaching people how to do it. But the, 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 the school had a six hour, it was a six hour course. Six hours is not enough to kind of come in, get an assignment, get out, and nobody has a car, so you're taking transit to whichever story you're covering, come back uh, and edit, given that they didn't have any skills at this thing. So it takes longer. I mean, it's one thing if you, you know, for a professional to come back with a story, 30 minutes to air, and cut it, right? They can do that. I mean, a professional can do that, but a student can't do that. And, and so I had them come in early. The class officially started at 10. And I said, yeah, that's good, but you will ne we'll never do it. You can do better stuff if you get in at nine. And, you know, and so the eyes would roll. And, <laughs> and the other thing I did was I made them sign in when they got there. And I told them if they were coming in at 9.01, uh, they would lose marks. <laughs> so I uh, to teach them the importance of a deadline, which yeah. as I yeah. defined it to them, if you miss it, you're dead. That's why it's called a deadline. Yeah. Uh, so I was you know, tough on them in that way. And, and I kind of learned not everybody was into it. Uh, most were, most were, but not everybody was. And, and the other thing I did differently, I know, and, and broke rules at the university, frankly, to <laughs> Don't tell them. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I never gave anybody their marks until the end when it was all over uh, because oh, I didn't want them doing the work for marks. I wanted them to do the work to learn. And I said, don't worry about it. Just don't worry. No one's going to fail. I promise you no one's going to fail unless you just don't come. Yeah. Um, but just keep listening to what I'm telling you and get better and better and better at it. Um, and, you know, for me, it worked. And I think for most of them, it worked. But I mean, students, I've, they are mark obsessed, unfortunately, many of yeah. them. Yeah. Um, and, you know, they run over their grandmother for half a mark. And it's terrible. Um, yeah. and, and so I try to get that, get away from that. Just tell them, just do the work and don't worry. Just get better at the work. And it doesn't matter. And because no employer down the road will ever ask, did you get like C plus or A minus in Mark's course. Who's going to ask that? Nobody. So don't worry about it. Just do the work and get better. That's what I try to do. I think that sounds like you're a good teacher. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what is the best thing about being Canadian? So, oh, well, you have much have a very long time here. Um, <laughs> look, from a very young age, frankly, uh, I realized how lucky I was uh, to be born here. Uh, my parents were both born here, but they're the youngest in their family. So they're, they're fa they are the first generation Canadian, but all their siblings are not. Uh, and so they, for, you know, for most people who would have met my parents would have thought they were immigrants as well because they didn't speak perfect English. Uh, they didn't read very well you know, they were in immigrant families and, and, but they weren't the first born here. They were the last born. Um, and for me, when I look at my background, I'm a miracle. I am a miracle that, uh, I came from not well-educated parents, uh, and somehow, but they had it in their heads that I should be educated. And I, you know, my father is, was a, he worked in a sugar refinery, so no, not a, didn't take a briefcase to work. Uh, my mother was a housewife, so she didn't. So we were dependent on one man's income. I have two sisters as well. So he was raising a family of five on one income. And my mother knew how to save a dollar. Uh, and it was, and, and yet here I am, you know, these many years later, having had a life, I don't think they would have dreamed of that, you know, no calluses on my hand. Yeah. because my father had them right yeah. um and this country um i mean look around the world does any i mean because i've read done news so much mm -hmm. even as a boy when i delivered a newspaper and right? i don't not many people even remember uh the days when young children used to deliver newspapers 
Um, but I delivered the Montreal Star, you know, a newspaper that no longer exists, uh, and would read it as I delivered it. And like it became clear to me, reading the newspaper, watching television news, that a whole lot of the world is a terrible, terrible place. Mm -hmm. um, and yet I was living this carefree life. You know, I, I didn't even know we weren't rich. You know, I mean, I was fine, right? We didn't have a car. Uh, I, but I thought, you know, taking the bus didn't seem like a terrible thing to me. We didn't go on vacations. We could, you know, very often. And if we did, it was like for a week in the mountains just outside Montreal. Like we didn't go to Rome or Paris, God knows. Yeah. Um, and yet the country made it possible, the kind of country we have made it possible for me uh, to really realize every dream I could ever have had. I, I have a family. I have a woman I love that I could marry. Mm -hmm. I have a job that I, I really did love. Yeah. Um, and it was an important job. I, I actually contributed, I hope, to this country. Yeah. Um, I just think Canada is a terrific place, but not a perfect place. But mm -hmm. what I think of it now of as is a, like an imperfectly perfect country. Yeah. Uh, it's, 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 and not everybody I know has what I have and through no fault of their own. Yeah. But for me, <laughs> this country has done everything possible it could have done. I have succeeded because I have been allowed to succeed. I'm not an idiot to think that I did it on my own. I, I'm just, I know I didn't. Yeah. So after so many years on the night news, on the national, are you still a night person? Uh, oddly, no. <laughs> I've, uh, I've turned right around. It's a really <laughs> remarkable thing. I mean, there when I was at the, na well, when I was at the national, I didn't sleep was the real issue here. I mean, yeah. I, we, I worked until about midnight, one o'clock in the morning. And then I would come home on public transit because we had one car and I left the car for my yeah. wife. So I'd get home like one o'clock, one thirty, and then I'd eat because I found yeah. that if I ate at work, it was, I, I got no pleasure from it. It was just fuel. I was just eating, right. Just putting yeah. things in my mouth, but it wasn't, it wasn't fun. It wasn't good. So I would have dinner when I came home alone, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I'd get into bed around two. But if I wanted to see my children, I'd have to be up by seven uh, because else I wouldn't see them. They'd be going off to school and what kind of, that'd be terrible. Um, so I would sleep from about two to seven. And that meant that on weekends, you know, I'd say, I'm going to go over and read a book. And my children re realized that was code for daddy's going to fall asleep. Yeah. <laughs> um, but now, uh, I, you know, and I think it may be an age thing as well. Uh, I get up by about 530 every day, no matter when I go to sleep, but, but I'm usually in bed reading by about 10, 10, 15. Yeah, um, wow. But I get more sleep than I ever did. So people say, well, how can you, you know, get up at 530? And I'm saying, well, I'm sleeping more now than I ever slept. Uh, it's and, you know, to me, again, the kind of person I am sleep seems like a waste of time to me like that's how I interpret it I know it's not fair or right because sleep's important I hear I you know I read all these studies uh but you know I just think sleep is not productive uh to me and so I would rather just keep going just go 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 and you know Mark I often think for journalists you know you're you're absolutely surrounded by the news. I mean that that's your livelihood. For me, if it's too much, I can turn off the radio or the TV. How how were you, how did you turn it off? Well, I mean, I didn't turn it entirely off, um, yeah. but I certainly have managed. It, it took it actually took a while. Uh, I mean, interestingly, my wife is like you. Um, she doesn't watch nearly as much as I do. Yeah. Uh, and she's always amazed that, you know, if, when I've seen one version of the news, I can go to another network and watch the same story by another yeah. reporter, because yeah. to me, it's interesting, not just the news, but to see how they do it. Yeah. Um, but, you know, when she says, I don't want to watch the news tonight, I can, and I don't want to do this or read that, 
And I think, you know, news put the roof over your head, <laughs> you know, <laughs> news put the food on your table. But still, I get it. Uh, and, and lots of people don't want to watch the news yeah. because it is depressing. And, you know, today it's depressing. Oh, but I don't yeah. think people have the right to turn away and not know. Yeah. I really don't think that's right. Um, I certainly watch obviously less news than I used to. I mean, I used to be in every minute of every day was news to me. Um, like I didn't read a newspaper for the news. I knew the news. Yeah. Um, I read the newspaper for the columns, the opinions, uh, you know, and the certain stories they would have, but not for the news. Uh, and it took me a while to figure out that I don't have to see every version of every story. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, three newspapers is probably enough. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I didn't have to read every newspaper, but and and today, my God, you can do so much. You can sit in front of a computer all day uh, and just you know surf websites. Mm -hmm. It's not very healthy. I wouldn't do that. Um, but it took a while. I mean, everything took a while after I, after I even after I went from doing the national, which got me home when everyone was sleeping, when I went to producing new specials, which meant I could be home for dinner most nights. And even that took a while because yeah. I'd come home and everybody had figured out how to live without me <laughs> at night <laughs> for all the, over those years. And I'm sitting, standing around thinking, hmm, what can, what can I do? Can I help you with your homework? And they're looking at me like, like now you're going to help me with my homework. <laughs> it, they didn't need me for that. So it took me a while to actually figure out where I fit in my own family yeah. uh, in, a, in a normal way. I mean, I fit in my family. I was the guy, like I couldn't go to my children's uh, like play you know school play or school concert because they were at night but I would go to the rehearsal in the morning yeah. before I had to go to work so I was you know that kind of dad I, I tried very hard uh but I, it, when I became more normal and not normal normal because there was still I'd be away of things and then and new specials could break out planes fall from skies yeah people get murdered or assassinated and I'd be off again uh, but it, it took me a while, actually, to get back into the groove of being a normal husband and father. Yeah, I can't imagine that. That would be a huge adjustment. Mm. Mark, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure getting to know you. Um, and for our viewers out there, we're not finished with Mark yet. Oops. <laughs> I'm like, where is that camera? Yeah. Mark will be back to talk about his latest novel. Oh, there we go. Not Inspi a novel. Oh, yes. Yeah, sorry. A collection of stories and inspiring ideas by 40 Canadians. Brilliant Canadians. Oh, there we go. So thank you so much for watching. Be sure to uh, watch my previous interviews. And if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Crystal. Bye, everyone. <laughs>